Welcome back. Today I'm going to be looking at the Read and Write Chrome extension. This enables you to read back research information online. It's got study skills option. It's got a built-in dictionary and various options. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome. Do a new tab. Here's the extension top right hand corner. Now I've installed the demo version. So if you want to go to text help read and write, it lets you download the extension and use it for a month. So first thing, I'll just go to Wiki as an example, Pedia, and see if we can read back some text. Anything will do, really. That will do fine now. Tap the extension for me, top right-hand corner once, and give it a few seconds to appear. Then we're going to use the playback option. Highlight the text you want, and select play, and it will highlight as it reads. John Thurtle, 17771839 was an English watercolour artist and frame maker. Born in Norwich, where he lived for most... You can select pause here, or stop it completely. Now, if you want a different voice, come to the right, select the options for me. Come down using Irish English Moira. There's loads of different voices in there that you can find and play around with. Tap back off of that. Here's your speed. Dragging to the left slows it up, and dragging to the right will speed it up. I'll leave continuous reading on, so it reads every sentence and paragraph. This option is when you're typing into a document, so you could have it speak back each word, so it echoes each word you type, or echoes back each sentence, so when you finish the word or sentence, it repeats it, so you can listen to it back before you carry on. But I've left that off anyway, and at the bottom here, if you want, you've got translation options. So click OK. So there's the first option of reading back. Also, when you're reading back online, let me highlight any word. I've got a dictionary option here. And that gives you the noun. If you scroll down, it will give you the verb as well. So if you click play, it will actually read it back for you. And click stop. So it's a quick built-in text-to-speech dictionary. And close that. The other option is a picture dictionary. So let me an example. So I'm just going to select the word born and select the picture dictionary and then it will play back for me the word born but also give me images that are relevant to the word and in a document you should be able to drag them onto your document in google docs or microsoft word as well and click close i'm going to stay on a website and i want to use these colors now options so you can highlight information that might be relevant to your studies so I'm just going to highlight anything random again and select yellow and then you might scroll down find something else that you wish to highlight and again choose any color you want so the colors are just relevant to what you want to use them for and what they depict for you when you're researching let's do one more so I'm just going to highlight that and choose pink once you've highlighted information you can use the option to collect them so tap on there, choose which colours you want to, but to be honest with you, I didn't use the blue, did I? So there's no point unticking that, but you might decide, actually, I don't want the yellow information, so you can untick it. Now I'm sorting by colours, or you can sort by position, and click OK. And here we go, a new document containing your highlights is being created. And as you can see, it now opens up for me. And it's all in Google Docs, and there's all my highlights and the available links so I can go back to any time I want as well. Then you open up your read and write again, which is just sitting here, and then you can re highlight them and then use the option at the end to clear the highlights off, or use the option in Google Docs if you wish to get the highlights off as well. While I'm in Google Docs, I'm going to stay in here. Also, if you're doing an assignment, you can read it back to proofread back your own work. So if I select play. He was a leading member of the Norwich School of Painters. He produced frames for paintings by several... It's a great option to proofread back your own work, as well as doing research online. Also, while I'm in Google Docs, why don't you use this option here called screen masking? But I've got a little ruler tint here. It helps me focus on my lines or paragraphs as I'm going down. So if I was to open up the browser, so if I was to go to Wikipedia at the top and select screen masking, I've now got that ruler to help me focus. 
if you turn it back off come to your settings options again at the end and on the left you've got screen masking you can change exactly how you want that screen masking for example you might not want a background color that's black and you might want more opacity or opaque or even the reading light that you're looking in you might want to tint as well you can even change the height of the ruler this option here and click OK I'm actually going to refresh this page website reload and open it up again there's another option a lot of people don't use so say you're reading an article I don't want to choose any word you come across a word you don't know I'm not sure about so I want to highlight that any color for now and you scroll down you find another word and again any color you want to use for this they have no consequence on what you're doing this option and again pink I want to come along and use this option here vocabulary list tap on it once and it tells you here a new document is being created and there it is in Google Docs now you create your own vocabulary list of words as you can see here and that way on the right here you can even tap into there and add additional information regarding that word if you wish as well and don't forget you click on here and then use read and write to read back the actual meaning of the word so we're back to wikipedia also there's a new option added here called simplify so if i tap that it will try and simplify the web page into text for you and this could be useful there's a lot of links that we just add in wikipedia or certain headers and tables it just makes it much easier to read so that way probably be better following it easier instead of it jumping from table to table Thirtle, one, seven, 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 one, eight, three, nine, was it? And select stop. And you've got the option here, black on white or white on black, to help you read the text more clearly as well, if needed. Now, there's another good option here, I think. It's not actually part of read and write, but you can integrate it with read and write. So, do me a favour. Type in there for me, Google Scholar, as an example. So, you did a bit of research online. And I'm after anything really. What I'm after is a journal PDF. And see what we get. Here we go. I've got stuff on the right here. So I'm going to select that PDF. Now, what we're to do is come up to the right or right click it and download it. Now, I'm going to choose where I'm going to download it onto my Chromebook rather than Google Drive. So I'm going to put it in my journal folder and select. So I'm going to leave it with that name. And download is completed. Now what I'm going to do is go back to Google Docs. And what I want to do is click the file, file and the open option. Now it's got an option here upload. So I'm going to select a file from my device. I've just downloaded that PDF which was in my journals folder. And I'm going to open it, select it, and let it upload. Now, at the top here, I've got open with, and I'm going to open it with Google Docs because I want to turn it into a Google Docs document so I can access it better, copy and paste highlight information or read it back and there we go I've now got that as standard text which means it might take a while considering the size of the journal there we go so wherever you click Kosovo a 55 mile long plateau in I highlight copy and paste your information better than being in a PDF format to work with and the other benefit with that is because then we can use this option here because if you've got a journal information, you can save it as an audio file, an audio book if you like, then upload it onto your phone. So you could drop it in your Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive online. Get the app on your phone, then access that audio book on your phone and listen to it when you're on the move. I'm just going to highlight a little bit of information, not the whole journal. Now come up to the top here and select a little option here called Speech Maker. Tap on it once.
and it says it's done. So now if I show it in a folder, so wherever you've highlighted, you create as an audio file. And there it is, there's my MP3. If I double tap it, Kosovo, a 55 mile long plateau in southern Serbia bordering Albania and Macedonia, should by all rights be a historical and political backwater. And I'm going to close that. So there's another good option you could use. Now one thing I haven't done yet is the spelling option here. So I'm going to create a couple of spelling errors in here. Click the cursor at the beginning and select the check it button. And you can see it's underlined it here. So if you go over it, and again double tap, you've got the option there as well to correct it. Two finger tap. And to turn it off, just tap on it again. The next option there is a prediction option. So it predicts as you type. So it can help you structure tensities or help you with your spelling. So I want to type after bordering so it's come up with on would have been the best option for me straight away that i was going to put there so if i select it and select there so it can help you structure sentences but also help you with spelling and turn it off just remember though if you want to use that come to your options on the right hand corner select prediction they can choose a number of results to show and choose whether or not you want to predict ahead or not and click OK. Also for any images like PDFs online you want to read online then you can use this screenshot reader so you tap on it and it will ask you to install a plugin additional to your read and write and then you can add the Chrome extension and extension and it will appear top right hand corner for you when it's installed. So reading images online or text that you can't assess. But I find using a PDF option that works quite well where you convert it with Google Docs. 